Hey there, Pirate Monkey Crew, and welcome to another miniature painting tutorial. Today we're continuing on with the Hulk. Really what we're going to start off by doing here is what we did with the skin. Uh, we're going to be washing slash glazing on a purple. And I'm wanting to get the Hulk's trousers to be this kind of like brownish purple-ish tone. And so what I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to be doing these kind of back and forth glazes with purple and with orange and then we'll transition into some layering. As you can see here what's going on, the the paint is kind of fighting me, like it's pooling up, there's a little bit of an oil right there and I'm trying to dab it on and just to see if I can get it to stick, but it's just not really wanting to cooperate super well. Um, so I'm going to leave it and just kind of finish going around the whole model once just because I figure if I have it in one place then I might have it on other places just like right there. So. This isn't anything to worry about. A lot of people make a big deal about like, oh, the oils from your skins, the oils from your skins. It's not a big deal. Um, there's a lot of substances that break down um, oils and one of them is isopropyl alcohol. So I'll show you how to clean that up here in just a second and that's the solution. So we have some Q-tips here with some isopropyl alcohol, just kind of testing it out on my thumb. You can see it lifts up some of that green. So the nice thing is that most primers are pretty resilient. They're pretty durable. They're supposed to be, right? Um, and so we're just going to go over some of these areas very, very gently until I see a little bit of that purple lifting up around it. And, you know, generally that's when we know it's time to stop, when it starts lifting up some of that paint, because we know that it's, if it's breaking down the paint, it's probably breaking down the oils. And then we can just get right back to painting, right? It just goes right over that area, just lightning fast. Um, so this is what I always do. Don't be afraid to touch your miniatures or to have like a, a one or two touch points because we can use that trick just to kind of circumvent the that traditional, oh, the oils of your hands are the worst thing ever for your miniature. There's a lot of things that break it down. So anyway, I'm going on and on. What we're doing now is we are coming in with a pyrrole orange glaze Orange, of course, is complementary to purple, and so what it's going to do is it's actually going to have the effect of darkening the purple. It takes a couple of rounds of this to really get the effect to start to come through, but you'll see it here in a few. And you guys, just to let you know in future videos, just so they don't take super, super long, I'm going to start to push things in time lapses once we explain certain basic concepts. Like if I'm doing the same thing, I want you guys to see the whole process, but I want to be able to do it in a little bit more of an expedient manner so that you guys are getting like a ton of great information in one smaller package. So we're doing a second glaze of orange. I think that I felt like the first one was just a bit too thin. And I, you know, I, I found that if you do a little bit more of an intense complementary glaze, it just tends to shift things a little bit darker, a little bit faster. Of course, you don't want to go too far. Like you don't want to layer it on, but um, at the same time, it's pretty hard to like layer these paints. They're pretty transparent.
Okay, and now we're coming back and we are glazing back on the purple, just like we were talking about before. And you can tell it starts to shift it a bit darker. Now, once again, with all of this, just like with the Hulk himself, this is like a very casual glaze, right? It, it's, to be honest, it's like, it's like a little bit more of a controlled wash. Um, we're not trying to be like super dainty and careful with it. We're just getting it on and making sure that it's not like really pooling up. So you can treat this as a wash, but then just kind of come back and soak up those little puddles, right? So now we're shifting gears a little bit here. Um, we are coming in with a, a bit of a mixture of black, white, and the purple. And I think there's a little bit of orange mixed in as well just to denature it a little bit. Uh, and what I'm doing is I'm starting to kind of create a bit of a layer on top of it. I felt like the white was a little bit too... It was, it was reflecting the light from underneath a little bit too strongly. And I wanted to get these trousers to be a little bit more dirty. I guess would be the right word. And so we are just coming in here and starting with a bit of a layering process. And then towards the end, we should glaze this down. It just gives us a little bit more control and things are also getting a little bit too dark for me. Um, and you know, there's nothing wrong with either way. Like if you want to just paint up a really quick, fast um, tabletop level of the Hulk, the, the oranges and purples would be a really great way to do it. Really, really fast make it look really cool just if if the white's just peeking out a little bit too much just do additional glazes just over that area and again nothing too special here just a very standard layering process um just trying to think about the shapes you know on his legs big cylinders his his booty right there is a big old sphere and so i try to simplify these problems as much as i can so that Things don't come off as too intimidating, right? If we if we can simplify a complex thing, it it makes it much more approachable. And that even goes for me, right? Even sometimes I have some of these large, you know, complex things that are staring me in the face, you know, like a ten ton gorilla, and I I have to I have to simplify or I'll even go crazy. <laughs> Okay, and now we've mixed a little bit of white into the previous mix, and of course we're just coming back and we're just going that one step up. Um, we, we just wanna make sure that we're not really going outside of the previous layer. Like essentially we're just, once you get that first layer really locked in, you can just paint within the lines. It's as easy as that each time. Um, because if you have good shape language, like if you're painting the shapes accurately, then yeah, you don't really need to need to worry too much. Um, this this does make the painting a little bit easier and quicker as well, and it makes it much faster because each time you're painting a little bit of a smaller area. Um, but anyway, something that I I will do uh, all that withholding is in the second layer, it's not too much brighter than the first one, and so if I notice that there's some areas that need correction, it's not too late to correct them, right? Uh, just with this color. So that's that's what I'll do.
Okay, so I've just decided to kind of come in and smooth things out. So I'm coming in with a, an orange glaze, and then I'm sure I will come in with a purple glaze. What you can do too here is you can you can do the first like two or three layers, glaze it, and then come back with the the last color that you used, and it will just immediately create a highlight. And so here I'm coming in with a little bit of that purple, and I'm just painting in a little bit of a, of a shadow here before we move back to that next brightest color like I was saying. So what we're doing here is we're just coming back with the last highlight in the layering process that we used. Um, it doesn't need to be mixed any brighter because since we've done those glazes it will automatically be brighter. Um, even with it being orange, it still will shift the value a little bit lower because it's interacting with purple. Um, and yeah, so it's a little bit of a, a weird painting math kind of thing. but. So yeah guys, layering is just layering. I wish I had something better to say here, but um, you can only explain layering so many times. It's just a great technique, right? In my opinion, it's just one of the most versatile ones. Layering and glazing can really move mountains when it comes to miniature painting. There's lots of other cool techniques, they just don't have the same level of control in my opinion. And to be honest, for each each higher color, we're not doing anything complex. We're just adding in a touch of white. I decided to come in there and add a little bit of a highlight on the inseam just to kind of add something in there. It seemed just too dark entirely. Um, it would have been okay just to leave it as well, but um, yeah, just some of these things are creative decisions, right? If you feel like something should go there, just try it. The worst that's going to happen is you have to paint over it a little bit, right? So as we get to the end here, I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. I know this isn't like the most complex or interesting subject painting, the Hulk's trousers. Uh, it seems like somehow his trousers always have some kind of role in the in the movies, but uh, you know, it's just a little bit of a different take on painting this kind of material, the way that we started out, and then uh, yeah, just kind of this normal layering process, which I hope is still handy to see my take on it, the way that I approach it. Um, Everybody approaches it a little bit differently, and I hope that these videos are helpful for you. Maybe maybe make these things a little bit less daunting to tackle, and um, yeah. So anyway, everybody, thank you so much again for the support here on Patreon, the support here in general. It's been a little bit slower on the miniature painting side of things, which is, which is okay. I've been needing a little bit of a break. That's a whole topic for a whole other video. Anyway, you guys... Hope you are having a great day during all these crazy pandemic times. Please stay safe and happy painting.